Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carlisle. Change here if you're travelling to Workington, Whitehaven. Change here if you're travelling to Old Whistle and from stations to Hexham and Newcastle. Also change here for Dumfries. If you're leaving us, make sure you pick up all your belongings and when the train stops. <coughs> well done, here we are, finally. 198 days later, back at the football. This is a surreal experience, isn't it, really? Well, we were just saying uh, to a couple of like fellow blues in passing in the car park, uh, socially distanced, lad. Yeah. Uh, it's very pre-season friendly esque, isn't it? It's uh, it's a lovely warm day, which you associate with July. There's people about, you know, you know, there's a match on, but it's not middle of January busy, is it? It's it's no, it's it's a little bit confusing because the kit's a one o'clock kickoff, so normally time right now. 25 to 1 it's starting to get quite busy in the car park isn't it people are starting to turn up it feels more like it's half one isn't it it's kind of weird it's, it's yeah, a bit of a weird yeah. sort of feeling yeah it's uh, like I say, it's, just, it's surreal you know people are uh, people all seem to be distancing and whatnot. so yeah it's good yeah so it's it's, it's, uh, it's looking good yeah it's, good. It, it's, it's, it's been pretty good you know it's journey up for me was a bit of a strange one on the train because normally on my train it, it's busy I get I usually get a train at about half ten from Wigan and actually I only got an hour early this time because obviously I'm arriving two hours before rather than three hours before but even allow for that normally it's packed with fans going up to Scotland to watch every Celtic or Rangers yeah, yeah. and you get a few odd fans going up maybe to go watch a game in Newcastle or something like that but it was dead there was barely anyone on it and it, it, it's just a really really sort of weird world yeah, to I come into for you having to travel up for games you, you'll notice it more but even then, when uh, we, we walked down Warwick Road earlier, the, what, it didn't feel like a match day. It was only once you got outside the club shop that you saw the steward jackets, people waiting to meet people, and the club shop queue. You know, that, that's only when it sort of... If you were driving down, you wouldn't know there was a match till you got right on top of it, would you? Yeah, well, we're, 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 me and one of my mates who I stand with, socially since I should point out again, we had a quick drink in the Griffin beforehand because it's right next to the station it was convenient and it was dead in there as well we were pretty much the only one about four or five people in there so people are sort of listening to it it's just the way it is um, but it's going to be very unusual when the game kicks off to see what the atmosphere is like and we, we, we both me and you watch a bit of football in Germany don't we on the telly and it's been interesting the difference when the games have fans at them now because they're getting about 20% of the capacity they're allowed at the moment and the intensity of the game is a lot different, isn't it? Yeah, I watched uh, a lot of people I also follow Hamburg. Uh, they were on uh, BT last night and a couple of friends over there were lucky enough to get 
one of a thousand tickets in a 55,000 ground and although it doesn't sound a lot even just 1,000 fans in when the goal scored there was proper cheers it wasn't artificial and it just felt real you know and it could only be a good thing getting people back in so we are the uh, first football league game to have fans allowed back we don't mention the other trophy where there was fans allowed the other night let's just treat that as a pre-season game Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we're the first game back with fans are allowed. We're also the last game that fans are allowed before the lockdown side. So it's quite a surreal experience, isn't it? And as the club have pointed out today, the same referee for both games, Graham yeah. Salisbury, really weird quick. M- Mr Salisbury referee, not uh, Carl Alphans' uh, favourite referee, but yeah, it's a few little quirks, isn't there? You know, it's, uh, I mean, if we get the same results as that last game, everyone will go home happy and let, let's just hope it all, it all goes well. Everyone does as, as, as has been asked. And maybe the Barrow game will get all the season ticket holders in and maybe more, you know. It's... That's the dream, isn't it? That's the hope. And there's also the worries of all the mini lockdowns happening around the country. Start in my area on Tuesday, so whether I'll be able to attend the Barrow game, I don't know at the moment. It's, a, it's kind of a weird one. That I've looked at the regulations to try and work out whether I'll be allowed and I still can't even work it out. I can't travel on public transport. Can I drive? I, it's, it's, it's a bit of a weird one, really, isn't it? But let's let's move well, on. I think it's one of those, if you class it as a short break, a holiday, and you drive, you'll be OK legally. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. We'll, have to, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it, I'm sure. Let's talk about today's game anyway then, Dan. So we've got the team news now. Um, just the one change. No real surprise to see Dee Furman come in, seeing as we were a bit overrun in midfield last week. Luis Alessandro dropping out. Um happy enough with that or do you think maybe there could be more changes Uh, as soon as the team was announced at 12 the first two messages I had were why is John Mellish still playing and as we said on the preview version it's not a slight on John no definitely not it's just he doesn't look an attacking midfielder certainly not at the level of uh, sorry to put in the elephant in the room again a Jamie Devitt you know there's certainly no comparison big game for big game for John today uh, good to see Dean Thurman back in because as I've already said I'm a big fan of his I was when he was at uh, Bradford etc uh, sorry Oldham and Doncaster that, he was the sort of player I wanted us to sign five years ago so hopefully he can have that experience calming influence in the middle and hopefully our front players can get running at a defence that, as we said in the preview, doesn't look very good, does it? No. You've got to hope the aim early on is it's being realistic. We don't want this to be the only thing we do all season, but get the ball to Toure and get him running at their right back because he's, he's shown in the first couple of games he's got quality. He nearly scored a wonder goal against Cambridge. All we need is to get him on the ball, running at the players, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, like I say, I think, I think turning over the ball and getting it forward quick and running at them if, if we can do that early on hopefully take an early lead the game's ours you know they don't look to have much going forward we'll probably change our mind come three o'clock knowing Carlisle but uh, it's definitely a game we need to get out fast out the blocks on the front foot start running at them let them make the fouls get the bookings and you know let's push on and get a first three points of the season that's got to be the aim hasn't it really it's a game that looking at it on paper I know football on paper doesn't work that way but it's one that we should be getting three points from, surely. Yeah, I remember when the fixtures came out, I saw, was it Cambridge away, South End at home, Scunthorpe away. You thought, that's, that's not a bad start to the season, is it? You know, But obviously, last week at Cambridge was uh, terrible. But uh, no, chance to put things right today and uh, let's see how it goes. I'm just having a quick look here at the um, lineup for South End. We mentioned him, obviously, in the preview. Alan McCormack, big experience head in there, popular former play as well for them. He's gone straight into their starting level without a pre-season. Not a massive surprise, is it? Given how they defended last week, not a surprise at all. But there's a difference between keeping yourself fit and being football match fit. And you would like to think, sort of come the second half, the hour mark, his legs will start going a bit. And that would maybe be a good time to bring bring someone on from the bench yeah. to... Uh, to run at them even more, you know. Ho- well, hopefully the game will be out of reach for them by then. But The other new lad, the lad from Barnet, um, he's not on the ben- on the team at all. He's not even on the bench for them. In fact, they've only named six subs, by looks of things, so it does suggest they're struggling a bit. Yeah, definitely, because uh, I know they've got a lot of young lads, so they can't be struggling for uh, an academy person, can they? But... Yeah, it might be one of, 
the only reason I can think of is the live one off is the academy version. So yeah. unless someone's picked up a knock or maybe he wasn't registered in time, I don't know. But they, 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 they do yeah. come across as the sort of team that would only travel with a bad 18. So yeah, maybe someone's took ill or God forbid failed a test, you know. But no, well, we'll see. Well, let's hope, Dan. It's a it's a good day for us this afternoon. Uh, nice three points, moves ahead of Barrow in the league and take our place as the top Cumbrian team for now. Yeah, that'll do for us. Up the Blues. Oh, 
Right, Greg, first game back in six months watching football. How have you found it so far? Uh, I found it really exciting to get in. I just I felt like a little kid again. It was like that excitement of coming back. But first half, it was a bit scratchy. But as the, as the half's worn on, we're levels above these lot. And, it's, and it, when it shows, we're playing really, really good football towards the end of the half. And really encouraging. And we, we think about what we've done the other few weeks. But um, it's looking like we're starting to play a little bit better. And they do look dreadful, I think it's fair to say that. I mean, as soon as Toure did that little turn of pace for the second goal to get past their lad, you just felt to yourselves, we've got a grip on this game now, haven't we? Totally, totally. The, the front three are playing really, really well and they can't cope with them at all. I'd like to see the midfield pushing up a little bit more, put him, put him right under it. We'll get four or five if we do this today. I mean, even Mellish is someone we've sort of said not convinced about him as a midfield spy. He's had a better game, hasn't he? He's yeah. putting himself about. Yeah, yeah, he's putting himself about and he's, he's, going, he's, he's box to box at the minute. Like I can't fault him for his efforts. Sometimes I think his uh, his first touch is a bit weak, but his his game and he's getting stuck in. I mean, there was that one, there was a ball that went out in the first half, and he, he could have went in stood stood showing. He, he needed to put him his knee in him, but he was like, oh, he's, he's brilliant. Like today he's doing all right. A little bit ropey with Anderson. Uh, I don't think he's had a good half. Um, Tanner Tanner's been out of position a couple of times, but it's all coming down our our left there right. So Anderson's looking a little bit um, looking a little bit isolated. But other than that. I can't, I can't fault them. And the experience of actually coming into the game and all the setup they've got here, it's all good, isn't it? Yep, it's very safe. I don't feel like I'm, I've got a load of people around me. Um, there's lots of space. There's, there's not a lot of there is there's not a lot of people in this section in Paddock Ten. Um, yeah, I'm really encouraged by the start. It'd be nice to get the bar open and to get a uh, pint like, but apart from that, no, it's all good. There we go, second half. I can't see us losing this one, can you? No, no, I can't. I'd like to see him um, get a couple of the boys on there. Maybe get Riley up front and give him a run out. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to get four or five in this half now.
Okay, Dan, uh, first home game season, fans allowed back up to Brunton Park. Three points, clean sheet. Not really but too much to grumble about, is there? No, uh, solid enough, 2 0 win. As you say, three points, clean sheet for the defence, do them and their confidence good. Uh, to be honest, it probably could and should have been 3 or 4 0. Two or three chances cleared. That low? I'd have gone even higher than that, to be honest. Yeah, could, uh, two or three chances cleared on, on the other line. A uh, couple of excellent saves from their keeper actually yeah, shot the close range ones. Their keeper kept them in it, especially in the second half. Uh, but let's be honest, they are dreadful. I mean, it's what, 15, 20 minutes after the game now. And if they were still playing now and all our players were off the pitch, they still probably wouldn't score South End, they were that bad. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, our keeper, Paul Farm, and uh, I don't think his top will need washed after that second half. We had, he had one save to make, didn't he, in the first half? That horrible low bobbling shot, which he spilled a little bit. But bar that, for him it was mostly kicking practice, wasn't it? And he's got a hell of a kick on him, hasn't he? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, considering he was kicking into the breeze in the first half, he's got a good old uh, hammer foot on him, hasn't he? Definitely, and he's, he's got a huge run-up, he goes right back to the board, and then just absolutely launches it. And there's a couple of times what it, what it did. He got us up the pitch, and Coyote goes to try and win a header, and their defender flicks it out for a throw-in. And to be honest, our throws were as good as corners today from Coyote, weren't they? Yeah, his throws were excellent, uh, especially in the second half when we sort of we had sort of a, a period mid mid to late second half where it's amazing we never got that third goal. Well, you you, you didn't hear this, but um, towards the end of the game, you could hear their manager was absolutely fuming about Coyote's throwings. I think he was trying to claim he had one of his feet off the floor when he was taking it. And I'm thinking, you know, mate, if that's what you're complaining about, just, just take a look at your side. Yeah, they're, yeah. Not, they're not off to the job. But but yeah, I think we just mentioned there, just as we came out, that the first 20 minutes or so of the game... Well, well, before the game, we said it felt like a pre-season game, didn't we? And then the way the game was played was like a pre-season game for the first 20 minutes or so, wasn't it? Yeah, the, fir- the first 20, 25 minutes were actually quite scrappy, I thought. Uh, both teams couldn't really get a foot on the ball they were time wasting a bit as well yeah it just seemed to be flying about a bit and uh, something seemed to click with us sort of half an hour in and uh, whether we went we went up a notch or we just started making our passes we uh, we got the first goal big deflection but uh, to follow it up so soon with the second definitely helped us and to be honest probably finished the game as, uh, as, a as contest, any chance yeah. for South End I think I say as well I think big difference for me in the selection today and the way we played was Dean Furman yeah definitely I mean I, I know I said pre-match he was back in and we hoped that he would be the uh, the old head who would just sort of calm everything down around him and that's exactly what he did you know he was he was here there and everywhere in that midfield and I know uh, Gimme Tudor got the man of the match award and attacking players usually going to get favoured over the defensive but for me, it was definitely Dean Furman. Yeah, I, I thought I, he was absolutely quality. 100% agree with you. Especially as the game went on, he grew so much into it and he was winning tackles. And We've compared him to Mike Jones before, but he, the way he plays and even the way he is on the ball is very similar. And there's times when he gets the ball, he looks one way, feigns, does a quick almost 360 on the ball and gets away from a player. He, he's very good at that. And that, that sort of thing opens up the whole pitch to your team, doesn't it? And I think actually... He, he made John Mellish look better. I mean, Mellish wasn't perfect today, but he was a lot more involved. He was causing problems. He was winning a few flick-ons. I mean, I'm pretty sure he won a flick-on leading up to one of the goals, possibly. I can't remember, but he on, looked a better player, didn't he? On he, he did, but on the flip side, there was a couple of chances at the Warwick Road end where... He could have done better. He could have done better. I think A better midfielder would have finished them, I think. I think, but, to be fair, the first one was the one where Toure put his, uh, his marker on his backside and then... He did a Rabona cross along the floor, which I don't think Mellish was expecting. I think anyone was expecting yeah, it, to be yeah, really honest. Fair. And he swung at his with his, you know, his standing leg, his right leg. The second one probably should have done better, maybe leaning back a little bit. 
it's one of those things me and Greg discussed it during the game we said once I think once Melish actually gets a goal you might start to see a different play you might see a little bit of confidence because we've seen he can do it clearly in those reserve games but it's just maybe that he just needs something to give him a little bit of a lift doesn't he in the games yeah uh, like, I don't think it's a starting sense of it. He wasn't terrible by any means, no. but he, uh, he yeah. just he needs something, whether it's a goal, a decent assist. Because and when when he was taken off, there was a bit of a thank goodness from a few people around me. I know there was many people around me, but no, it's, let's not let's not be too negative. Though. We've had yeah. we've had a good good afternoon. Done the job basically. That was yeah, the key yeah. thing. He was. Don't get beat. Don't do anything stupid. And we didn't. And we, we generally kept it very calm. We didn't have to force the issue when we got the two 0 lead. And I think we looked the better side. We I, I would say the word would be comfortable, wasn't it? The second half was comfortable, and I, I thought last twenty we seemed to go again. And like we said, probably should have been three or four, if not more. But yeah. we'll take that as a result, won't we? Let's talk briefly about the goals then. Um, first one uh, with a corner, wasn't it? I think it came from originally. Um, I think that, so the ball came over and I think Toure did a brilliant job in keeping it in and had a shot on goals deflected over for a corner corner comes in bubbles out and Patrick just does what any good forward should do and just hit the thing and hope it takes a knock off someone and it did it went in yeah yeah uh, good awareness from Patrick like I say when we, when we see the replay on telly it'll no doubt show the deflection but you know he's took the shot he deserves the goal and, uh, I did wonder if it came off one of his teammates it was very hard to tell it looked like it took two knocks actually as it went in But yeah. no no, uh, like you say they all count don't they and uh, it was good to uh, follow up so quickly with the second I think it was literally two minutes later wasn't it so. yeah well I mean the, the second goal as well I mean that tory has got man of the match and I wonder if it's always just for that little bit of magic to, to set it up he, he picks it up pretty much on the halfway line on the left and skips past one man and then it's just just the awareness to take that just slight touch just to knock it past his his marker and get himself away and then the ball through to Coyote which is perfectly yeah, weighted yeah, it? it was lovely it was lovely and uh, it was quite a good quick move uh, which shows what hopefully our front three will do when the, they're all up to speed well that's the thing we were saying as well during the game is that the three of them Torre is probably the one in the best shape actually because he's played most of pre-season but even I'm sure Beach said in pre-season that he's coming off having not played for so long in the non-league setup, straight into the football league setup, it's difficult for him. But both Patrick and Coyote really haven't had a pre-season, have they? And they're still getting themselves up to speed. Yeah, I also thought it was quite a good decision to to replace a couple of them on sort of 70 minutes. You know, the, the game was done as a, as a result. One, it means we're not flogging them already. And two, it also gets minutes into the likes of Walker, Alessandra and uh, Riley. There's one thing I was going to criticise Beach for, and it's a very small kit, and probably not even a true one, but he maybe could have brought Riley on a little bit sooner, I think, maybe. Yeah, I thought that myself. I'd maybe have brought Riley on ahead of Alessandra this week, but uh, we're nitpicking there, to be honest, aren't we? And Ethan Walker, when he came on, he, uh, he made some nice little touches down the left, and uh, he seemed to link up with Anderton quite well, so... Yeah, well, we did actually say during the game, Anderton had a stinking first 10 or 15 minutes, didn't he? And he? He got himself booked and he didn't really look like he was up to the game, but fair play to him, you know, good captain's form and got himself back in and did okay. Yeah, I, to be honest, I think the same could be said for most of the defence. You know, the first sort of 15 20, the two full backs weren't brilliant, but as the game came on, they, grew, they certainly grew, and both Tanner and Anderton were getting up and down the line. and uh, Hayden and uh, McDonald had a, a relatively oh, decent game, McDonald I thought. McDonald was a massive improvement in his last couple of games. He looked, yeah. I mean, they, they we, didn't have we, much to we, do, yeah, didn't we've they? got to give it context and say South End, gen- and I know we say this occasionally about teams when they come up here, but genuinely they looked one of the most bereft sides I've seen in a long time. But in the path, they just offered nothing up front. I mean, McCormick was getting a bit of stick from the paddock because he was not the quickest, to say the least, and he came, he got subbed off for them, but. He was, he, yeah, he was the only experienced heading there and he was the only player who looked like he had anything for them, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, they're, it's going to be a long, long winter for South End fans. Like I said, defensively, when McCormack was on, they weren't too bad. But certainly going forward, they offered absolutely nothing. And even this early in the season, they have to be a strong favourite 
for one of the two relegation spots. You've got to imagine, haven't you? I mean, what, two games in, six conceded. Doesn't really look great for them, does it? Um, OK, I mean, a quick one then, Dan, on what the experience was like for you going into the game. I mean, we talked about it, me and Greg, at half-time, and yeah, do you know what? I think the setup was brilliant. I could have no complaints at all with how it went. Yeah, uh, I was in the Warwick Road end today. I'm normally in B stand, but obviously with the distancing measures in place, as a few folk moved about, and it was, to be quite honest, it was like going to a normal game. You know, there was there was no queue to get in. It may be a bit different when there's a few more going in, but there was no queue to get in, straight in. Signs were well, you know, signs were clear, well signposted. Even, even something as simple as going to use the toilet, one end entry, the other end exit. It was all very, very, very organised, yeah. And full marks to everyone involved in getting it ready. Yeah, I, I think the thing we were saying before the game, and it's absolutely right, it did feel like a pre season game. Yeah, was, but it was great to have, you know, actually hear fans, wasn't it? And just, it didn't feel that much quieter than it does on a normal game. It was, it, it was nice. Yeah, one, once you're actually in and watching and the crowd noise is reacting what's happening on the pitch, you don't notice how few a crowd there was half or and it was it's only now I mean we're just up by the church on Warwick Road and you wouldn't know there'd been a football match on now and it's only what 10-15 minutes after yeah normally you still have quite a few stragglers yeah, heading down the ground a few wouldn't you now, so that, that's, that's the, big the only so. real difference you know yeah. the approach to and from it's not until you're on top of the ground that you know something's going on but no it's uh, been a pleasant experience it has yeah and like like I say it, it, it's it is going to be different. It's going to be a strange experience for the next few months at the very least to go and watch the football. But, you know, it, I, I think it makes a difference. It, to the way the players play, it, definitely. There's a there's a little bit more intensity, isn't there, in the way that they perform on the pitch. Yeah, the definitely. There's, there's times when you could see players reacting to crowd noise. You know, when you get a corner or, you know, one of Coyote's throw-ins, which is equivalent to a corner almost. You know, it was... Uh, you, you could see the players sort of feeding off uh, the fact that there was fans in and long may it continue. Well then, thanks very much for joining me again. And, uh, some clown in an Audi drives by with his engine <laughs> playing up. Uh, exactly. But yeah, thanks for joining us again, Dan, and uh, hopefully we'll be back in a couple of weeks and there'll be a slightly bigger crowd for the Barrow game. Here's hoping.